Hey, how you guys doing? I figured I would uh, show you my little reading corner over here and uh, in my Pleasantville area. <laughs> uh, no, actually, for real though, I had a an idea for a topic. Actually, somebody told me I should go ahead and try and uh, and make a video about this because there wasn't a lot of information out there. So um, I get people asking me all the time about the bin inspection process that I go through for the Washington State Patrol, and. Um, you know, it could be different in, in your state there. The laws are definitely different in, uh, in, in different states. Um, I, I've got some stories about just how different they are. But in, in Washington state, the VIN inspection process has been pretty messed up for the last couple of years uh, due to the vid, you know. And um, it used to be... The different counties, you could go to their VIN inspection, set up appointments, and you know process wherever it is. And then after you know the thing happened, uh, they shut down for a long time. And then when they did open, they didn't have the same funding. And so I believe on this side of the Cascades, there were only two places you could go to, uh, one being in Tacoma and the other one, uh, I'm not even sure. Maybe it was Everett or... Bellevue or something like that, but um, the point is, is that there, it, it, it was increasingly more and more difficult to get appointments, and um, initially it was, you know, okay, you could, uh, you could sign up for an appointment. It would have to be at this time, and then, um, and then you could, uh, you know, you'd have a little bit of time to sign up, and and then those appointments were gone, and then almost overnight it was like if you've ever if you've ever tried to cop like some shoes or um you know a console or like anything in high demand on drop day then you understand what i'm talking about um between the bots and everybody trying to get it, it it's like impossible so um i've got some tips and some tricks that i have learned and uh you know hopefully they will be opening up more vin lanes soon um in different counties and that will take some of the stress off of uh off of the Washington State Patrol departments that are currently operating. Um, but for right now, this is uh, kind of what you got to do um, in order to in order to make this happen. So let me kind of, I'll start from the beginning. So as some of you know, and maybe some of you don't, um, when a vehicle gets totaled out by the insurance company due to one reason or another, uh, that vehicle goes usually to a auction yard. Uh, the, some of the most popular ones are Copart and, um, and auto IA auto auctions. Um, I personally use Copart in Washington. They have three lots, four, uh, Seattle, Graham, um, What's the smaller one? I don't know. There's two more for sure. Uh, one's out on the East Coast, but uh, the other one, I can't remember. It's so small, and I've never bought cars from there. But then also, I've got uh, Portland has a couple down there, which are really cool. Um, sometimes you get different kinds of cars down there. It, you know, different areas have different things that you know people gravitate towards um anyways so the insurance company for one reason or another they total out the vehicle the vehicle goes to an auction yard in the auction yard you uh as the customer you can bid on these cars and uh sometimes you can get good deals sometimes you don't it just kind of depends um but you can bid on these cars and then uh you pay a certain dollar amount and then you know, based off of how much you won the car for, there are fees, and it's kind of like a sliding scale, and it doesn't slide in our direction. Believe that, okay? So um, you go through that whole process, and then the car gets delivered. Okay, so now you own this vehicle. 
or we won't even call it a vehicle, we'll call it a hunk of metal because Washington State Patrol doesn't recognize it as a vehicle. Um, after it's been totaled out, it is not allowed on the roadways. So I don't care if the thing runs and drives and will drive straight and only has cognitive damage and blah, 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 blah. It is not allowed to wa operate on Washington State roads. Um, you can't even get a trip permit for them. The trip permits are for registrable vehicles, vehicles that could be registered. Um, it is not for vehicles that are not allowed on the road. And when a vehicle is told out, it is a safety hazard. It's not allowed on the road. Um, now, with that being said, <laughs> is it bureaucracy? Probably. Uh, you know, really, they just want their little money and they want to make sure that you're not driving something that has parts on it from something that it shouldn't. Uh, and we'll get into that. But um, that that's basically what it boils down to. And so once you receive this vehicle, technically, the only way that you can transport it is by towing it around on the back of a truck. Um, and that means towing it to a frame shop, towing it to a body shop or a paint shop, towing it for, you know, know wherever you're going um technically speaking that's how it has to operate on on that's the only way that it can move on state roads um prior to being inspected okay but let's just assume for conversation's sake you've done everything the car is ready to go vroom vroom Starts up, runs, no leaks, <laughs> no check engine lights. Okay, whatever. Um, and we'll get into that. So you're ready to do the VIN inspection. Here's where the tricky part comes in and where I'm going to give you guys some game. So when you go to the Washington State Patrol website, and I'm going to show you guys how to do all this and the, and the thing, but when you go to the Washington State Patrol website, um, you will sign in and give your information, uh, just some basic stuff, your name, um, maybe the VIN number of the car that you're going to register to uh, inspect, and uh, a couple other things. And, and the reason why you want to create an account sign and sign in is because then that information will already be there. Um, because the name of the game with getting these appointments is going to be speed, speed, speed. Okay. You want to make sure everything is appropriate because what's going to happen is, um, you're going to sign in and then these appointments for Washington state vendor inspection, they may change this, you know, but for right now, this is how they work. They only offer these appointments on t for on for Tacoma anyway. Again, they may change themselves. They only offer these appointments on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Okay, that's not 10:58 or 10:50 or 11:03 or any of that. It's 11 a.m. on the dot, and this stuff goes so quick that if you if you log in at 11 01 or 11 and 30 seconds like you're probably gonna miss it you have to be on your stuff okay ready to hit refresh at exactly 11 already signed in ready to hit refresh that's the only way you're gonna get a, an appointment and you might not even get one then okay because you still have some things to do okay Sorry about that. <sighs> My phone ran out of space. Okay. So let's just say everything goes your way. Okay. You're signed in. You manage to, you know, you, you, you've got your name, your uh, VIN number, the address, whatever. Okay. You're signed in. It's 1058 or 59 and now it's 11 and you click on it. Okay, boom, you're gonna these little squares, blue ones are gonna appear, okay, and they're gonna be 30 minute increments. Now, you can wait, you could try and pick a certain time if you want. Uh, I have found that when I tried to choose a time, um, that 
one or two seconds that it takes for me to go, uh, one, two, three, four, five, you know, whatever, and then pick, um, that is one or two seconds too long. Uh, you will be greeted with a sorry, there are no more time slots sign. Okay, that's what's going to happen. Happens to me all the time. Um, so what I would recommend you do is at exactly 11 a.m., the second the thing pops up, just click on a blue box. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you want it to be earlier, click on a blue box towards the top. If, if, if you want it to be later, click on a blue box towards the bottom. Don't worry about the time. If you get the appointment, <laughs> make the time, okay? Like you're... You're, you you just cop the Travis Scotts, okay? Like you just you just won, okay? Um, but that this is only half the half the battle, right? So the appointment options pop up, bam! You click it, okay? You happen to get one, all right? This is where people mess up. You're required to put in the year make model the vin number will be auto populated if you are if you have it in your settings already in your account that's why i said go ahead and put that in there right um and your name will be auto populated and your address but i think it's like the year make and model is a requirement right in order for you to hit save and for it to continue to the next one okay so here's the here's the rub okay here's the 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 key so the minute you click on a box, any appointment date, whatever it is, okay, and it opens up and it asks you for the information, type XX, XX in the date mega model section and hit enter, hit the, hit the continue, save button, okay? So XX, XX, boom, hit the save, okay? Because you can do that super quick. All right. It will save your appointment if you're lucky. It'll say, congratulations, you're a winner. Woo! Right. And it'll save your appointment. And then immediately after, or, you, I mean, you can do this at any point in time up until you go to the clerk's office to get the paperwork. But immediately after, you can go in and edit it. And I'm going to show you how to do all this. You can edit it and then put in the date, make a model, carve in, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, all, all you're really doing is saving the space, right? You're, you're, it's like, Black Friday, right? And the Xbox comes with the tickets and then you're up front and you're like, woo, ticket, but you don't open for an hour. I'm out of here. I'll be back. Yeah, I hate those people too. But you know what I'm talking about. That's basically what it is. You got the ticket. You're out of there. Okay. You come back and get it at your leisure. <laughs> right? So that that is the the super juicy Okay, like you know a guy in now, okay? Again, make sure you set your account up and you're signed in ahead of time. 11 o'clock on Tuesday, 11 o'clock on the dot, not 11.01, not 11 and 40 seconds, okay? At, you need to be there signed in and hitting refresh at 10.58, 10.59, okay? And use an iPhone for time-wise, so that way we're all on the same page, okay? I use an iPhone, that's what time-wise is, that's what we're synced to, Okay. So, 11 o'clock Tuesday, and it's every Tuesday, okay? And so what happens is when you make this appointment, the appointment is they make them a month out. So it's 30 days out from the Tuesday that you, whatever Tuesday you make the appointment on, it's 30 days from then is when the Monday is, and you can make appointments Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, right? Within 30-minute 30, 30 sections within all five of those days so you can be you could pick a five o'clock or maybe not five o'clock you can pick a one o'clock appointment at, on thursday and it'll be 30 days plus monday tuesday wednesday and then thursday of the week you know and it tells you but it just gives this is just so you can prepare you know what i mean you're at least 
30 days out from the date you make the appointment and they only do it in one week in increments that's why you got it like every tuesday so if you don't get it on the the tuesday that you try hopefully you at least see the blue blocks uh the make an appointment blocks so you're one step further or hopefully you get into a block and you put in the information you're not quick enough or something so at least you can visually see okay this is what he's talking about you know what i mean uh it's right at 11 o'clock again if you come in at 11 or 1 you're gonna you're never gonna see it you're gonna be like this isn't happening they don't do this anymore i don't know what's going on whatever blah 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 right so um anyways i'll, I'll kind of show you the process on the on the page uh Okay, so so now that you guys understand the process for making the appointments, let's talk about what happens next, right? So your hot rod's built, okay, you made the appointment, all right, now, and you went in and you put in your information, you updated it, so now it knows you have this appointment on this date and you're bringing in this car with this VIN number, this year, manufacturer, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. So now you take the paperwork that you got from Copart or IAA or whoever, right? And you go down to the clerk's office and you tell them you need a VIN inspection. They're asked you if you have an appointment already. That's why I'm telling you how to do all this so you can do it in order so you don't waste their time and waste your time. They're going to ask you if you have an appointment already. And if you don't have an appointment already, I mean, they'll sell you the paperwork. No, they can't even sell you the paperwork. They can't even give you the paperwork because the paperwork is made out for a specific date and the day, it's the date of your appointment. So you have to do that first. So they'll send you packing. And the lady won't have any information on how to get a better appointment. I'm telling you the info on how to get the appointment right now, okay? Like the DMV, they don't know, or the uh, county clerks, they haven't got a clue. They, you know, one of them might tell you, oh, I think they do and this and that and blah 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 and they're like they keep them in the in the weeds with that okay so i'm telling you how to do it make the appointment right do it the way that i showed you and then you go into the county clerks and say i need an inspection they'll ask you if you have an appointment you say yeah it's on this date this time boom they'll look it up in their computer say okay fantastic we see you and then they'll charge you right and i think you pay uh, it's like eight bucks or something like that. And they give you a temporary per, uh, transportation pass. Okay. So this one is a two day pass. It's good for the day of the inspection and the next day to basically allow you to drive, to get the car inspected and then to drive to the DMV and to get it registered. You know what I mean? That is, that's what it's for. Okay. Um, so they give you this transportation pass and they also give you the paperwork that the Washington State Patrol is going to require, right? And you're going to take that whole packet or whatever and you're going to say thank you and you're going to pay your eight bucks or whatever and then you're going to bounce, okay? So now let's talk about the actual inspection day. All right, so be, getting prepared for the inspection day is pretty easy. All right, you just want to make sure that you're refreshed early, you know what I mean, and that you got your paperwork in order. So here, here's another in, and they tell you this on the website, but I'm going to give you the juice, okay? So when you rebuild a car, they have very specific requirements for, of where the parts come from. So if you are to use used parts, the only used parts, and this is Washington State, okay, but the only used parts that you are allowed to use have to come from a brick and mortar reputable junkyard, okay? I said that again, brick and mortar reputable junkyard, an actual business, uh, preferably in Washington State, but it can be out, out of state, okay? And... The reason why is because they want to make sure those parts are coming from cars that are actually junked, okay, and not cars that have been stolen, <laughs> right? They don't want you to take cars and strip them and make new cars like Transformers and push them out. You know what I mean? Like, that's, <laughs> they are not playing, okay? So when it comes to the used parts, 
Um, you can rebuild a car, but the, I'm telling you, the only place I would get them from is from like junkyards, uh, pick and pulls, whatever. Because what's going to happen is they're going to give you a letterhead receipt. It's going to have the part number on it. It's probably going to have the VIN number of where the, what car it came from and stuff. And so when you take that along with the car to the Washington State Patrol, they're going to look at your car, verify there's a new part on there, look at the receipt, and then they're going to go contact or look it up you know what i mean and if they can verify that information then they're going to be like sweet you're you're on top of your game you know what i mean and if they can't man they're they're just gonna well here's the deal there are two type of VIN inspections that you can get okay one is the one you want and one is the one you don't so the one you want is the VIN inspection that goes flawless and you're on top of your paperwork and at the end of it they had you a piece of paper that you signed and it says that they inspected everything and you rebuilt it using these parts that they were able to verify and everything is up to their standard and this car can be registered okay and titled that's the one you want the one you don't want is when they come out and hand you the paperwork you sign it and at the bottom it says cannot verify where parts were obtained from three-year registration okay now what that means is that they you can register the car and you can drive it and you can own it and you can rock it until the wheels fall off but they will not issue you a title for three years okay let me repeat that they will not issue you a title for three years and the reason why is because they can't verify where those parts came from and they don't want people just taking it and selling it and then it comes back on them or whatever and I'm sure there's some bureaucracy and some other stuff tied in there okay but the point is is if they can't verify where the parts came from they're going to annotate it at the bottom of the slip and they're going to send you packing and then you're not going to be you're going to be able to register the car but once you're it's registered in your name then you're going to you're going to own it and you know if you want if you were doing this to sell a lot of people aren't going to buy a car from you with no title you know what i mean like a promise to receive a title like you'd have to know them the person you know and they understand the situation and then then they're like yeah okay no problem but a random joe schmo i mean if i walked up to you on the street and said hey you want to buy this car i don't have a title she gonna look at me like i'm crazy you know what i'm saying so anyways that's why it's the one you don't because if you're trying to sell this car if you're trying to flip them if you're trying to make some money if you're trying to build a business off of this you're trying to do it you want everything by the book you want it all to be paper in line easy peasy when you deal with the washington state patrol you want them to respect you to know that you respect them and their time and their efforts and energy and stuff and um and so you want the process to be smooth you don't want to be in there and no jucking and jive. Uh, 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 i don't uh, uh. no that's not gonna that's not gonna fly right so on the day of your inspection you want your paperwork to be in order you want to make sure you have receipts for your used parts from local places. Oh, and if it's out of state, that's fine too, but you need to have the receipt, the letterhead, the, so everything, the VIN number, you know what I mean? Everything, because they're gonna go and they're gonna look it up and they're gonna type it in and look. And if they can contact somebody at a wrecking yard in Florida that has a VIN number of a car that's totaled out and that's where the bumper that you got came from, then you're golden as long as you keep track of all that stuff, okay? But if they can't, then you're not, right? And so that's used parts new parts are a different story so if you're buying locally again from places like certifit or you know brand new parts from bmw or mercedes or honda or whatever cool right you go in you buy it you order it or whatever it shows up they give you a receipt it's from you know honda puyallup or whatever you know you put that on the car so when you're going to the inspection you hand them that receipt and they're like okay wonderful all right um that that's fine when you are purchasing major parts for your build outs and they define that as bumpers fenders hoods doors um engines trannies rear ends cabs you know of trucks like stuff like that right um anything like that and 
that is considered a major component, and that is a component that requires a receipt and a verification, okay? Headlights, trim pieces, tie rod ends and ball joints and control arms and wheels and windshields and interior pieces and all that stuff, all the secondary crap, they don't care about, okay? You can get that stuff from eBay or Amazon. You can buy Chinese knockoffs or the real deal. You could do whatever you want, and they don't care about that. They care about major components and the ones that I labeled off specifically. And on their website, they have a list of exactly all the components, right? So when you are purchasing those components new online, they don't really like that, period. They don't want you to buy from Amazon. They don't want you to buy from eBay. They don't want you to buy from Fit Parts or uh, CarParts.com or any of that. And the reason why is a lot of times they can't verify those parts. Like even if they're new and they're aftermarket and they were made in a factory in Jang Chang or wherever, like that, they don't. That is. They don't care about that. They're not cool with that. They want to know. They want a paper trail, okay? And so the easier you make that paper trail, the easier it is for them. So, for instance, your car, you know, you had to do a bunch of front-end work, but the major components that you had to replace were a bumper, a hood, and one fender. You know, you did a core support, a radiator, some pulleys, a couple plastic pieces, a headlight, some trim pieces. You did all that, too, but the major components, a hood, a fender, and a bumper, those ones, let's just say, for instance, you had to replace them. Your best bet is to come from a junkyard here locally or certified or you could buy them from the manufacturer if they're not crazy expensive um those are your best options if you have to buy aftermarket online then what i recommend is you buy from a store not ebay not amazon okay but an actual store rock auto or something like that you know whatever you need the receipt okay and preferably two receipts, right? So the sales receipt and then the packing slip, you know what I mean? That one. And then the box with the shipping, <laughs> the shipping label. They want you to cut that out, okay? You need that, right? So if you roll up with the shipping label, two receipts um, from a, an actual company like Rock Auto Online or something like that, then uh, then they'll be happy to to certify that. You know what I mean? Because it's a paper trail. They can verify that you know it's not some BS. You know what I mean? eBay second, triple, quadruple hand seller or whatever, and then they'll you know run through your thing. So. Oh, and just don't even bother buying parts off of the internet. Like if you're like, you know, offer of Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, any major components that I'm talking about. Again, secondary parts, headlights, taillights, stuff like that, whatever. But the major components that I'm talking about, okay, don't buy those from a person, you know, some dude who's got a Honda Civic that he's like, oh yeah, I'm stripping it out, you know, come take whatever you want, a hundred bucks a piece or whatever. No, you can't do that, okay? You can't use those because... Washington State Patrol can't verify where that came from. And if they could verify where that came from and you could give them the VIN number of the car, they'll want to total out that car in the system. Um, they don't play about that. They, they would want to total it out if it wasn't already totaled. You know what I mean? Um, because that's the only place that you can get used parts from is from totaled vehicles the way that the system is set up so don't even bother getting them from offer up or something like that not major components everything else is fine wheels computer pieces you know what i mean interior parts like all that stuff is fine but doors fenders hoods bumpers like no stay away trannies engines no stay away from that all right so, okay, everything's groovy. You pull, you're you ready for your inspection. You got all your receipts. You got the paperwork from the clerk. You put the sign in the window with the two-day pass, okay? Um, when it comes to the inspection, and you can read all this, you're... 
the car just needs to be not missing any major components and it needs to be running properly okay now the lights on the dash it could be lit up like a christmas tree okay the only two lights that they care about the number one light they care about is the airbag light okay that's the number one light the number two light they care about is the abs light okay those two lights you keep those two lights off and make sure everything's squared away they don't care about nothing else okay if you got the traction control light on check engine light on oil temperature light on water temperature light on like they don't care about none of that <laughs> okay uh they care about the airbags because the airbags need to be functioning if they're not functioning then it's an issue okay and then they care about the braking system if the braking system is having a problem then it's an issue those two things are are serious and really the abs is like i feel like i've gone through with an abs light maybe not i don't i don't remember but i say abs and airbag airbag being number one abs number two Okay, so as long as those lights aren't on, you're good to go, right? So you pull up. I would show up on time. Early doesn't really matter. On time is the way to go. Late is, I mean, you have a window, a 30-minute window, right? If your appointment's at noon, it's from noon to 1230, so somewhere in there. But I prefer to show up at noon, right? <laughs> like, show up at the time of your appointment, you know what I mean? And, uh, and they respect that. Respect their time, they'll respect your time, right? So you show up, you pull up to the line, you turn the car off. They're going to tell you to, when they're ready to turn the car on and to pull into the inspection bay. So you pull into the inspection bay, you turn the car off. You hand them all your paperwork. They'll probably ask you for your ID. They don't ask me anymore because I'm in the system, but whatever. Um, they'll probably ask you for your ID. You hand them all the paperwork with, all, with your ID, and then they're going to verify that you actually have an appointment. Okay. Once they verify that you have an appointment, they're going to look at a couple things. They're going to make sure that all the doors open, okay, and they're going to look in the doors and make sure that the VIN number on the door jam matches the one under the glass, matches what's under the hood, okay? And they're going to look under the hood and they're going to look in the trunk, all right? So all the doors, hood, trunk. They're going to look at the parts that you replaced. And how are they going to know that? Because they're going to go into the office and they're going to go look up the old co-part listing and the pictures that came with it, okay? They're going to see if the fenders are jacked up or the hood or the this or the that. They're going to look at the major components, right? The ones that I was telling you about. And then they're going to look at your car that you pulled in and they're going to say, okay, this, this, and this were completely destroyed, right? The guy obviously didn't fix this crap with Bondo, okay? So this, this, and this do i have paperwork for it boom and then he looks at his paperwork and he's going to say okay hood fender bumper from these places he's going to verify that if everything checks out you are the golden ticket he's going to come in he's going to look at your lights and make sure that the airbag is not uh, on it cannot be on i'm telling you the airbag light cannot be on they will they will tell you to come back Okay, you have to do this all over. So no airbag light. ABS, I'm not sure about, but I'm going to say no. Okay, just for ease of sake. ABS, no. Airbag, for sure, no. Okay, they're going to look at that light. They're not even going to check your blinkers or your headlights or any of that. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's all about. If it's a necessity, I've never had them check. They've never checked any of the lights, right? None of, none of this stuff. Um, there's just the things that I'm talking about. The VIN number the airbag abs uh and the, all the doors open all that is good they can take your paperwork they're going to tell you to move up to the next line so you move up just a little bit further they're going to go into their office they're going to run all that paperwork and then they're going to come out and they're going to hand you a stack of it and ask you to sign one spot and you're either going to have a car that you can register and receive a new title or you're going to have a car that you can register and you can't receive a title for three years one of those two they usually don't waste time okay maybe they'll come and ask you a question if you sound like elmer fudd they're going to let you they're just going to sign it and peace out brother they're not even going to bother messing with you 
okay and so now when you pull out like that I said before you have that two-day pass which counts for inspection day and the next day to go get your car registered uh, you take all that paperwork take that to your local DMV and that's it you've got an inspection you've you know done everything required by the law um, if everything's good, they will take all your paperwork. It takes about 30 days or whatever to uh, receive your title in the mail. And um, and that's it. You're rolling. You're rolling in your co-part. <laughs> co-parts, parts, car parts. Car. <laughs> yeah, that thing. So, anyways, um, that's pretty much the entire process in a nutshell. Uh, like I said, I gave you a couple of little tidbits you know the getting the appointment one that really is the important part if you get the appointment you're you're basically solid um just make sure you have your receipts in order and uh to be honest if like if you do a bunch of work to the car and you're gonna have to paint the whole car do the inspection before you paint like roll up there with bondo and 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 uh primer you know what i mean blocked out and whatever right like not even like ready for primer kind of thing you know what i mean roll up like that you know blotched and everything because then they can see what you have replaced and what you've repaired and it makes it so easy for them that you're, you're like the man at that point. You, you're going to get respect. You're going to get talked to with respect. I mean, you're going to get talked to with respect anyway. But they, they have some busters that roll through there, man. And eventually, they're like, man, these clowns is tripping, right? But if you roll through and, and you got your stuff squared away, your paperwork squared away, they can easily see what's going on and all your stuff lines up. You're going to be breeze. You're just going to breeze right on through. It's going to be nothing to you. And then from there, you leave. You go to the, you know, DMV or whatever, you register your car, you take it home, and then you can, you know, prime it and paint it and block it and do whatever you want to do. And then you're, you know, you're the man or the woman, right? You're, 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 you're solid after that. So anyways, um, that's the Washington State Vent Inspection process in a nutshell. Uh, maybe one day I'll record going through there. I just don't know how they feel about that. And, uh, you know, I don't like to infringe. They've been real good to me. Uh, I've gotten a lot of vehicles. I'll show some of them in some clips and stuff as, uh, as we're going through here. And uh, you can see what I'm talking about. And uh, look, if you got any questions, hit me in the comment section. Okay. Uh, I, I, I do this. This is, you know, it's kind of like my side thing. But, uh, you know, I, I figured out the system and I want to help you guys out. You know, uh, the couple of people that may want may need this information, okay? Because look, they're paying people that, for the bots, and they're paying people to sit there and eleven o'clock, you know, like be on it, like tweakers, you know what I mean? Like the 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 Mountain Dew guys, right? And the, this is who you are competing with, trying to get just to get an appointment. Just to get an appointment to whether or not you have your stuff together or not. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's it's too much. It's too much. Washington, come on. Let's get the bin lanes back open. Right? Get these cars going. You know? We got people that have been, gone, at this point, going years waiting on an inspection because they have no idea what to do. And, you know, the, the, the answers just aren't out there. So maybe this will help them. We'll see. Anyways, this is Chill with Bill. I appreciate you guys listening to me ramble. And if there's anything I can do, like I said, hit me in the comments section. Uh, throw me a like. Hit a subscribe. And uh, I'll try to make sure I keep pumping out the content for you guys. All right. Have a good one. <clears throat>